Having been plunged into this worldwide pandemic, many people are investigating Christianity. They've had uh, many of the things that they have always enjoyed in life, the things they live for, stripped away from them, and it's made them ask the big questions of life. And often when people do investigate Christianity, they come to a point quite reasonably where they say, is there any firm, solid evidence to help me to believe um, you know, people don't want to throw their lot in with Jesus, don't want to uh, give up their life to follow him unless they're absolutely sure it's true. And as a result, uh, people often ask a question that is in this book, if you could ask God one question. Um, if you've been watching these videos, you'll know that I've been going through the chapters in this book, a book that a friend and I wrote some years ago and, um, and revisiting them in the light of this uh, coronavirus pandemic. And uh, the 12th chapter, the 12th, the 12th question for God is this, why don't you just do a miracle? It makes me think of a couple of uh, friends of mine from the past who've asked that very question. Uh, I used to work with a guy called Steve when I worked in the newspaper industry. And uh, Steve uh, and I used to often talk about Christianity and, uh, and what I believed. And he said to me once, Paul, if I get home tonight and there's a pot of gold on the doorstep, then I'll believe. He wanted a miracle. I think of a guy called Bill, a neighbour of mine. Uh, lovely fellow. I was in the garden gardening. He walked past. Somehow we got into conversation and Bill obviously knew uh, who I was and, uh, and what I did for a living. And um, he said to me, uh, Paul, if only I could see a miracle, the sort of miracle that, that used to happen uh, when Jesus was on earth, then I'd believe. Uh, well, how do we go with this? Uh, people are wanting evidence, quite rightly so. Uh, where do we give them the evidence they want? Well, John's Gospel, which tells the life of Jesus, um, is written with evidence and not least of all miracle evidence for us to believe. John writes at the end of his Gospel in chapter 20, verses 30 and 31, Jesus did many other miraculous signs which are not written in this book. So John has written some of the miracles that Jesus did, but not all of them. There are many more. And then he says, John 20, verse 31, but these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ and that by believing you may have life in his name. John is saying, I've recorded these miracles for you as an eyewitness so that you will know that, um, that so you'll have evidence, so you'll know what Jesus actually did, so you'll have evidence of the miracles. Now, the fascinating thing for me when you read through John's gospel is the responses to the miracles. In John chapter six, Jesus fed um, 5,000 people uh, with a few loaves and a couple of fish. They all ate. They were all satisfied. They were all full up at the end of it. Uh, they saw the miracle. More than that, they tasted the miracle. And yet, when Jesus then taught to explain the miracle, they didn't like it. So Jesus said after that, I am the bread of life. He's basically saying, I've just fed you. You've been uh, filled physically, uh, but um, I'm the bread of life. I'm the one who can fill you, satisfy you, fulfill you spiritually. I, I'm really what life is all about. And people couldn't stomach that kind of comment and many walked away from him. They'd seen the miracle, they didn't like what he taught. Uh, then think of John chapter 11 where Jesus uh, raised a man from the dead. His name was Lazarus and many people saw the miracle and some of those people who saw it went to the religious leaders of the time and told them what they'd seen. The religious leaders interestingly don't doubt that the miracle happened but they look for a way to get rid of Lazarus, the dead man who'd been raised from the dead, and also then eventually Jesus, because they didn't like that Jesus was becoming so popular and people were following him. Uh, I find that fascinating. You can actually see a miracle. You can even taste a miracle. Um, and yet you still might not believe, not because there isn't evidence, but because you don't like the implications of Jesus' teaching and the implications of the miracles themselves. Now, if you're in the sort of position where you're saying, I really do need evidence, then the best thing you can do is read John's Gospel. And um, at, because it's written to give you evidence, uh, have a read, see what you think of it. But as you do, um, you need to ask yourself the question, is it actually evidence that I need? Or is it that, I'm, um, that I don't really like what Jesus teaches and the demands that he puts on my life? Is that why I'm not believing? Well, there we are. You can read some more in this book on that question. And uh, this book is free until the end of June 2020 as an ebook from the publisher. The publisher, the Good Book Company, if you go to their website and you uh, type in, if you could ask God one question ebook, then you can get this free uh, until the end of June 2020. Um, the other thing you could do, if you send an email to me at uh, Christchurch Forward, you'll find my email address on the website. 
uh, and just request um, a John's Gospel, a copy of John's Gospel, we'll send you one out free so that you can read for yourself.